name is Glenn Madden, and uh, yeah, I'm going to talk to you about JavaScript uh, strict mode, which is uh, a little bit odd for me because I'm not really a JavaScript developer. As I said, I'm more of a back end guy. I've always thought that I was a back end guy. Um, a couple of years ago, I started to really work on the web when I started Good Films. And in that time, I've learned a lot about um, the way the web works, the way the browser works, uh, the front end. But because I used CoffeeScript, I never really felt like I understood JavaScript. Um, CoffeeScript helped me a lot, and I still use it. But every time I came to try and write JavaScript, that's what it felt like. Um, because I'd make simple mistakes over and over again, and I wouldn't understand necessarily why. Um, I guess that makes uh, the question, when did I start using strict mode? Um, it also probably a good question, how did I even know about strict mode? Um, well, the truth is, I'm, I'm slightly embarrassed to say it. Uh, I realized uh, strict mode was a thing when I was using Yeoman, and it generated some files, and it had strict mode written everywhere. And I was on a bit of a kick to learn JavaScript at that time, so I kind of dived into it. So that's what this talk is sort of about. Um, it's kind of things that I didn't know about JavaScript uh, that uh, relate to strict mode. And hopefully at the end, you'll know what strict mode does. I think another title for this is bugs that uh, strict mode fixes that I didn't really even know existed. So let's press on. This is the simplest thing I could show you, I think. Um, this is some Ruby code, some coffee code, and some JavaScript code. They're all just assigning a simple variable A. Um, Obviously, if you're used to Ruby, you look at CoffeeScript and you think, cool, it's the same syntax. If you look at JavaScript and think the only difference is that you have a word var and a semicolon at the end, then you'll find out later that that's wrong. Um, I can imagine if you were a uh, novice JavaScript developer going through each of these examples, um, at first you start and you do everything perfectly, and then you realize that if you leave off the, the semicolons, everything still works. And then you leave off var and it still works. And then you think you're really clever, and you refactor into some method to do your setup. And before you know it, you're relying on the fact that you're leaking a global variable. Because in JavaScript, and this is something I didn't know, if you leave off var, you define a global variable. So strict mode, I, I wanted to introduce strict mode by talking about it fixing that. Because if that's all it did, I still think it's worth putting it in. Because leaking global variables, I think we can all agree, isn't a really good idea. Um, so you invoke use strict by putting the word use strict in a string with a semicolon at the front, at the top of your file. It has to be the first statement of your file or the first statement of a function, and it'll put that function or that file into strict mode. In this case, we're doing the whole file on the right-hand side, and when we call a equals math.py, um, because a isn't declared as a variable, it'll explode. And it explodes with a really good message, right? It explodes at runtime. It says, uh, a reference error saying strict mode forbids the implicit creation of global property A, which is about as unambiguous as an error message can get. Um, what I like is if you go and fix that, if you look at your novice code, um, you go and fix that, you might find bugs. In this case, we were relying on leaking a global variable, uh, and now it explodes somewhere else. So I think that's a good strategy. Put strict mode in, see what breaks. Fix it, see what else breaks. But I'd like to introduce some terminology here, because I, um, having come to JavaScript quite recently and with kind of fresh eyes after doing a lot of stuff on the web, I don't think non-strict mode is a strong enough word for making it easier to, um, to declare a global vari variable than a local one. I suggest we all start calling non-strict code YOLO mode. And if you don't know what YOLO is, well, this is the best GIF I could find on the internet to describe it. Um, I want you to sit down and every time you're writing JavaScript, think, I'm either going to write strict mode or I'm going to take off all my clothes and run around a cricket match. <laughs> so diving into strict mode a bit. Um, I've said there it removes some lols. What I mean by lols is uh, parts of JavaScript that make it easy to introduce bugs. Uh, that didn't fit on the slide, so we'll just call those lols. Um, it also makes some uh, code faster by making it easier to optimize. Uh, but then, it, unfortunately, it, it changes important stuff, and we have to be aware of that. So this is the most lol-heavy YOLO mode code I could possibly write that actually runs. And I've got a test suite for these slides that proves that this actually runs. 
I'm defining variables using uh, names, eval, and arguments, which should be reserved keywords but aren't. I'm defining a number using octal syntax, so that's the number 8, not the number 10. I'm deleting a local variable which doesn't do anything but doesn't fail, doesn't do anything, uh, it doesn't explode. I'm defining an object with the same key twice. I'm defining a function with the same parameter twice. And if you do all that, you get 8. Every line is a syntax error in strict mode. You can't use keyword the things that should have been reserved as variables anymore. You can't use octals because who uses octals? Um, you can't delete a local because it doesn't do anything anyway, but it didn't explode because of some reason. You can't use duplicate keys because the only reason you would du use duplicate keys is for a presentation. Um, and you can't use duplicate arguments because obviously that's stupid. These don't give you a nice error message. These just say syntax error, parse error. But it, you should just feel shame if you're defining, uh, if you're using this sort of thing. So I, I'm okay with that. So strict mode is saying no more lols. Try and stop the lols. Well, at least these ones. JavaScript still has a few. Uh, and let's move on to performance stuff. This is my favorite thing I learned about JavaScript, uh, and I'm sad to see it go in strict mode. Uh, the width construct is. Um, is just astonishing. Uh, within a width block, if you call a, a variable, it will look up on that object whether it has that property before it'll go searching in the, uh, for variables. So in here, a uh, property x on a on the left-hand side shadows the variable x that we've defined because you're calling it within the width block. Now that's cool and awesome, uh, but nobody I've ever met has heard of it and nobody has used it. And uh, in fact, the syntax highlighter that I'm using for these slides doesn't even recognize width as a keyword. Um, strict mode just says, okay, cool, we're getting rid of it. It has a good reason, apart from it being a very strange language feature. It makes code within width, uh, width block almost impossible to optimize because there's no lexical relationship between the variables you're using inside the width block and uh, what it actually will, will tend to be at runtime. So that's gone. It's a syntax error. No more width. It's a shame. Uh, the other big performance thing is they removed arguments.callE. That's now a type error at runtime. Arguments.callE is a weird thing that I don't really understand why it exists. I believe it's something to do with IE8 and named functions. But they introduced this so you could refer to your own function using arguments.callE. It's a very expensive uh, process, a very expensive call. But it also prevents inlining because each function needs to have, be able to have a reference of itself under you know, every condition. So that's been removed so that, uh, so that code, uh, code can be faster. The optimizing compilers can't be sure that you're not going to refer to Corley um, in every case. So that should make your code faster. Now, if you do want to get a stack trace, function.caller exists. It's not part of the standard, but it's in. Most popular VMs, I believe. Um, so you can still find out which is called what, but arguments.callE is gone. Uh, so that's all fine. And the reason I'm happy to kind of breeze through all those, because if you put strict mode in and you're using any of those, it'll break. And so strict mode will kind of be nice and uh, it, will, it will tell you uh, that you've done something wrong. But semantic changes don't work like that. Semantic changes may work in strict and non-strict or YOLO mode code uh, at the same time, uh, just maybe a bit differently. So the first requires a little bit of understanding of JavaScript's internals, which again, I only learned recently, um, that when you call a function like function x on the left here without, um, without context, uh, then this defaults to window or the global object. Uh, so in YOLO mode, xfoo is the same as x.call window uh, foo. So this defaults in the absence of things. And that could bite you, let's say, if you're defining your own class syntax, because it's commonly in a class constructor, uh, you'll use this everywhere to set uh, properties. If you don't use new when you invoke that object, you'll just be littering the global namespace with all these properties. Uh, that's the main kind of case that I can see it happening if you just forget new one day. Um, in strict mode, uh, global list now becomes undefined. So in the cases where you may have accidentally been uh, leaking global uh, properties, that will now explode. But 
it doesn't, it doesn't mean that it will always explode. It's not that kind of rule. But that's the new default, which is a safer default, a much saner default. The good news is if you call or, uh, a, a, a YOLO function from uh, a strict mode code, it will still pass window because that's what the function is def uh, was declared um, in. That's what its kind of expectation is. Uh, in, in the other way, if you define a method as strict and you call it from outside, it will still receive undefined because the point of declaration is the important thing, which means that you can mix strict and non-strict mode code. And when you're using strict, you'll know it's strict. And when, if you're calling into libraries, you're not going to break anything by having used strict. The other thing that's subtly different, and I don't know how widely used eval is in the language, but coming from Ruby, um, it could be a lot. Uh, in, in, in YOLO mode, eval just basically interprets it as if it's in, on the next line. Um, here we have uh, variable b equals bar actually shadows the b equals 2 on the, on the top there. Uh, C gets introduced into the local scope. It's as if they're just written along you know, each line. It also means that if you eval code that you didn't write or you build up, then it will have total kind of command over uh, the environment before the next line. Um, in strict mode, it's as if you wrapped all of those evals in a function expression. Uh, so things like a equals foo will happily overwrite the variable that exists outside. But if you declare a variable b or c, they don't escape, as they shouldn't. But the important thing is, JavaScript code that was written without any, you know, written non-strict, written YOLO, may well break. I mean, it could be using any one of these things that will break it. Um, there is also the possibility that strict mode is ignored by older browsers. That's less of an issue. But if you're using something like eval, you want to make sure that you're, not, you're either running strict or you manually wrap everything in a function expression. So how do you be safe? How do you use strict mode um, safely and know that you're not going you know, to explode anything? Well, concatenation is a problem. Because if you start a file with use strict and you do all of your nice stuff in there and you've wrapped it in a function expression not to leak variables and stuff and you're doing, you're doing your best and you concatenate someone else's code, then that code will be interpreted as strict as well. If you do it in the other order and concatenate someone else's code that isn't strict, then because your statement use strict is not the first, uh, first uh, statement of the file, your code will not be strict which you can fix in both cases by using the function invocation of strict mode, wrapping it in a function expression, uh, and putting use strict. It will keep your code strict and other code unstrict. So that's my little lesson. And I, I know how everyone likes, in the JavaScript community, guidelines masquerading as rules. But um, that's what you should follow. And it's so important. I wanted to write it twice, and I wanted to use this GIF. Um, wrap every file that you write instead of immediately invoked function expression with strict mode enabled. And you'll, you know, you'll be a good JavaScript programmer. Um, the last thing I want to say, because I've got just a few more seconds, is that CoffeeScript is really awesome, and it helped me a lot. But it will not teach you JavaScript. And it, at a certain point, it may be soon, depending on what you're doing. It may be a couple of years, like it was for me. You will need to learn how JavaScript actually runs. And um, if you, yeah, and strict mode, learning strict mode for me was a big part of that. Um, so that's all I got to say. So thank you all.